We are going on with our dealing with the giants. And giants are many. I thought by now I will have finished, but I also saw another giant. And I think it's good we slay the other giant in the name of the Lord. The giant of loneliness. The giant of loneliness. And I, and I want you to, to picture with me, um, just picture with me. A middle-aged man, having gone through a week that he was like the attention, people flocked into his house, people called him on the phone, people visited, people prayed with this young man. But this morning he's trying to make coffee and he's like me, I take lots of coffee or lots of tea. Sometimes I take tea until the flask is empty. So this morning, this middle-aged person is trying to make coffee, to brew coffee, and he normally makes four cups of coffee during the breakfast time. But this time, he brews only two cups of coffee. The reason is, he has a new title. And it has come before he expected it. He is now a widower. Oh, imagine with me, this person happens to be maybe away in college like I did when I was in Sweden. And he goes to the mailbox, hopefully, so that he can find a letter of comfort and solace. But he finds, disappointingly, an empty mailbox. And this person longs for connection from friends back home with whom he would or she would seem life revolved around only weeks before she joined the college. All I want you to figure with me, this is an old lady. She sits on a chair in her room And in that room is everything that she owns at that point. She has been reduced to only a little possession. And the memory of her life, when she used to have children around her, and grandchildren that would come and pray around her, and she would look at the window to see whether there would be people coming to come and say hi to her. There she is. Oh, imagine with me, Corona has hit and there is this man in prime of his life with the talent and strength, readiness to work, but finds days turns into weeks and weeks turns into months waiting for someone to hire them. But the employment is not coming. And the loneliness of an employment can be, cannot be understood completely by us that have jobs. But that man in his prime of life seems he's going through something that he never expected in life. We are talking about loneliness. Even those of you that think you're so connected, often sometimes we struggle with the reality of loneliness. And I want to pause a little bit and tell you, you can be lonely in a house that is packed by people. You can be lonely in a church that is full of members. You can be lonely in a place where there is a lot of noise. Because loneliness is not the absence of noise, but loneliness is a state that you find yourself. Loneliness has a greater impact even on our health, and it brings a lot of death in some of our people. 
Because sometimes you get so lonely or you feel you are, you start drinking, smoking, or even eating. And you lack exercise. And this, there is a study that has found people that are lonely, they tend to do things not the normal way. They become abnormal. And you know what? Even in the Bible, and we are going to see it in a little while, that's why God comes in to help us because you can be lonely. Let's look at uh, the Gospel of Luke. Luke 4 verse 1 and 2. We can go even up to 3. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did not eat nothing, and when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone, and so on and so forth. Temptation starts. But God in Genesis 2 and verse 18 is dealing with this problem of isolation. Remember, God creates Adam and he gives him all the freedom to go calling and naming animals. So he was a busy man. You know, busy in the sense, Akiona thigiriri. Unajua thigiriri. Uh, he would kneel down and call you, you, Zigiriri. So in other words, you would imagine he was a man so excited about life. He sees this big thing, he, hey, you Jogu, you Jogu, you know. And the Bible says whatever he called them, they became. You know, sometimes I don't know whether you have thought like myself. Some of the names he called were some surprises. He got so shocked. Because of this huge thing, but the name he called it became it. But after the day he spent, God looked at this man and saw depression. And God starts by dealing with isolation and he tells man, and the Lord God said, it is not good that a man should be alone. Modwewikiri, aiguwaga ewiki. <laughs> that's, that's Greek, you know. When you are alone, you feel lonely. When you are alone, you feel lonely. At the heart of loneliness is the desire to be connected. There is no one who does not desire to be connected. Whether it is this man who has a new title called a widower. And you know, a lot of us, actually people are left Watu wengi watu wa kaburini akizika mtu wao. Wewe unaweza unaweza fikiria tumwachagi lakini tunakuja mashakaya. Mashakaya ikiisha tunakuja kama mashakaya ingine. I think God need to help us to have another name after the mashakaya. Because you don't know how you have left that person. You know calling someone who who had a good name a widower. Hiyo jina siyo jina mzuri. Actually, kuna watu wameniambia bishop omba sana uzihitu wa widua. Ufanyika. Lakini marafiki zangu wana niambia, ikifanyika, utakuwa widua. Na widua, <laughs> somebody said this from this church, I called the widows. One time I had a meeting with the widows. Amen. And I'll tell you what they told me. Chini kuambia tu. So that unaeza okoka. Kwa nase maga hivi. Bishop. Buwana yangu alipo. Aga. Wadugu wote walio kuwa wakitebea hapa na wakezao. Because I'm not preaching about that, that's for another day. When is the last time you visited that widow of your friend? When is the last time you gathered courage to visit? 
or you struggled with what will the people say? Bishop umepaka gari wapi? Niliona wapi? We struggle with things that people are Did you know there are people that are not even concerned about you? Hata hawajui gari ulipaki wapi? Lakini ukipaki unafikiria. Sasa basi uje upake hapa kanisani uende kwa mguu. But that is for, that's for another day. So there are some of our people here because I'm talking about loneliness that they feel lonely in the midst of this church. But they are longing for some connection. Tumejaribu. Na vegeta. Tumejaribu. Hiyo ingine inaitakuwa nini? Hiyo. Hiyo. Kwani mmesahau? Hiyo ya wido tunaitaka nini? Sisters of grace. Na wadada wa grace, they don't need anything. They need only connection. They feel lonely. So what do we do when we are alone? Because you see, I'm not saying that you are, because there is some loneliness that can take you to depression, but I'm not talking about that. Before it gets to that level, what should we do? What should I do myself? And I want to go back to the verse that we read, Luke 4, 1. It starts by saying, and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness. He was not sent with a group of people. It was a time of his loneliness with God. It was a time. And my prayer is that when you feel alone, may you allow the Spirit of the Lord to lead you. Because where the Spirit of the Lord leads you, you will not falter or fall. May the Spirit lead any one of us here that feels lonely or has loneliness. Andrew Murray was a powerful missionary in South Africa. But he knew what it is to submit to the leading of the Holy Spirit when in difficult times. When he was in trying moments in the wilderness. When he was trying to set the work in South Africa. Listen to what he said. He brought me here in South Africa. It is by his will I am here. I will rest in this. He will keep me here in his love and give me grace to behave as his child. He will make the trial a blessing, a teaching. He will, be teach, he will teach me lessons he intends me to learn. He will give me good time and he will bring me out again. In other words, when you feel lonely, point number one, recognize that you are there by God's design. I become a widow by God's design. I'm a widow by God's design. It not just happened. I lost a job by God's design. I have to see God. Otherwise, hey, hey, maajabu. Mtu wamefiwa. Ana mgombesha mungu. Umako. Where were you God? We, we, we were just about. He was just about. Yani, he was just about. Ulikuwa wapi? You know we blame God. Oh, kwa, kwa ni mungu walikuwa meenda mahali. But for you to walk through that lonely path, all what you need is to know that God is in it. I am alone when you look at me, but I am alone with God. Because in it, he's going to bring me better. I'm going to be a better person. You know, asking a dead person, Rudy, unaenda? Kwani una, unaenda wapi? Mutimwere, mutimwere ni hati aradhi yiku? Unaenda wapi? Because people mourn in very strange ways. Did you know that? Alone. In other words, what we are saying is, where I am, I have an appointment. Every time you find nobody else with you, even in a church like this, 
Would you ask God, what is my appointment? What am I here to do? After the first service, I had a talk with someone who told me this. They had problem with one sister in church and they decided, Kwani kanisa ni moja, nitaenda. There are people who have left church because of you. Sio mimi. Bado wananiambia ni pastor wao ni nawahubiria. Lakini sasa wewe sijuli wafanya nini. So this friend of mine went to a church. Akakuta ujumbe wa siku hiyo. Kuna mtu hapa anatoroka kanisa yake. Rudi. What I'm saying you could be here but you're feeling so lonely. You feel oh god, have mercy on you. And uh, so what the conclusion was this, what this statement was told by that person. I am here by appointment. Yaani anasema aka dada mwingine anikasirishe namna gani siendi. Ati mimi nilitoka hiyo ushirika kwa sababu wadada wale wameolewa wa, wa waliniangalia kama nitawanyang'anya bwana zao. Wewe ndio ulijiambia hivyo. And if you had those plans, those are not good plans. Do, do you know if I have a problem with these shoes of mine? Unless I tell you, you will not know. So you are not the one telling me imetoboka. Ni mimi najiambia imetoboka. Kama haijatoboka ales. Vakia tuzuri. But you know sometimes it is we tell people unajua hii koti imepazuka huko na hakuna mtu you know so we struggle with it. may god help us to know that where i am i am on an appointment with god and in that appointment god is going to keep me and in that appointment where i am i am under some training and at that there will be a time that god will come and deliver me from the loneliness i find myself in i am under an appointment you are there by God's design. Na saa ingine ni vizuri ku... Na kuna watu hapa. Saa hii ni naongea unafidi hivyo. Unafidi ni kama huko lonely hapa. Na ukiangalia kuna kushoto na kulia. Wengine muko lonely. Na huko na mke wako. Na huko lonely. You see? Because I'm saying it is not the absence. It is a situation you find yourself. And asking why is seldom fruitful. Even though it is a perfect human response, it's, you know, because sometimes we have a problem to accept. But that response does not help us. Because that response demands an answer, but God does not answer. However, the acceptance of God's design is always beneficial even when the circumstances and outcomes are yet unclear. I wish you were here in the first service. We were told in the storm, we were told, Lala, now you can go and listen to that sermon. It was very powerful. In the storm, Lala, have peace. For those who are in the storm, but in the storm, you know that it's only God who can save you, then you rest in him. Because you cannot take yourself out of a storm. Hallelujah. Are you in that situation? When God removes from us those sources that we recognize as good, they are removed. A spouse is removed. Children grow and leave you. And you know, the good thing about this story about children leaving, can I tell you the truth? No, right now I know you. <laughs> but they will leave you. Better, they left you. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm just saying. They, you know. But at times you are so happy with everyone loving, you know, to, to angels. But they will leave you. Eh, wataenda tu. Na hautakuwa ukizaa. Always. Kuna mahali ya utazaa tena. I mean, it is good to, you know. Si hata Naomi anamuambia Ruth, Ruth. Si uende kwenu. Hata anamuambia, for example, onaigegea mwana nao. Can you wait for my child to grow and become 17 to marry you? Na kweli huyu 17, na anaweza kubali kuolewa na nyanya. You know, 
The whole story is you have to accept. You have to do what? To accept. Changes are inevitable. Hey. Na yu inaniwekaka sober. It makes me sober. <laughs> have you ever had a very good class? Nyinyi walimu. Rose. Class mzuri. Na utaki yende the next class. Unataka kukaa nayo. What would happen? Suppose they stayed. What will happen? Tuseme standard 8 ya hapa imekataa kwenda ibaki tu. Just think what will happen. I will not help you to think. Hiyo wewe ndio utafikiria. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verse 11 and 12, says, And there came a voice from heaven, saying, Thou art my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Verse 12. And immediately the Spirit driveth him into the wilderness. In other words, God is the one who says, This guy who appears to be lonely, he is my beloved son. Now that is what you and I ought always to pray. That God would say, this is my beloved daughter. Who you? And the spirit came and led him. Moses thought he would free the Hebrews from the bondage. And the next day he was lonely in the wilderness of Midian. Immediately. But what happened after? God trained him. God was with him. He was sober now. He was able now to go and deliver. There are some of you, in your loneliness, there is a training taking place. I said, it is not necessarily you are not with the people. The people could be with you, but you will be in a state of loneliness. May God bring out of you what God wants you to learn. He went back. How about Elijah? Elijah thought he was leading a revival in Israel after his meeting on Mount Carmel. Then he found himself fleeing deep in the wilderness for hiding. What was happening? A little while. I thought I was in the revival. I'm the one dealing with these people. But God, now I'm running away because God had not settled yet. There was rain that needed to come back. And for him to have rain, pride had to come down and know everything that he needed was in God. Maybe some of you where God has placed you so that you can know hamna, hakuna. It's nothing you have done yourself. It's all by the grace of God. And Elijah comes back and rain, rains. Actually he tells the king, enda mbere kidogo, enda tu mbere kidogo. Because I like that. And then the guy, the man of God, when that time comes to overtake, he just there are some of you that God will have to, to accelerate some of the blessings that you have missed the time you are running from your Jezebel. Yeah. That God, after the rain comes, it will be rain both to restore you and to move, to move you to your next level. Because there is nothing that gets lost. God has it in his hands. It will still come to pass. How about Paul? Paul thought see I was a general see I was doing this now there will be a turnaround and I will still be a general in God's kingdom it doesn't work that way actually this guy had to hide himself now from where from the people he was supporting the Jews and then from the Christians that he was killing they were afraid of him but God took him so that he can train him that the things of God, we don't use, the, f the flesh will fail you. You dare not trust your own. So the, all these wilderness experiences for those three guys that I've mentioned was God's design. God permitted it. That isolation was key for them. It was not just temptation that was going to help and design something. In our Lord Jesus Christ, he went through many temptations, but they have only mentioned three. But the whole time of 40 were time for temptation. But finally, when he got into real hunger, now the issue of his authority and his kingdom, he had almost conquered anything else as a human being 
But now the trial was for God and his authority. And even that, he overcame. Number two, what is going to happen when you are in your loneliness? And I want you to keep this. Please, if you know sometimes some of these someone you preach, people forget. But this one, just keep this one. Forget about this one and the other ones that I'm going to say. Rest in who is there with you rather than regret who is not. Does it make sense? Rest in who is there with you rather than regret who is not. Being full of the Holy Ghost. Being full of God. I will rest in who is there with me. The Holy Ghost. God is with me. I will rest in who is with me rather than he that is not with me. Ati wandugu wote hawako. Wadada wote hawako. Hata wandugu wani tembere yagi. Hata sikuizi ya wakuja kuniona. Walipo nipereka kaburini waliwacha pale tu. Nilipo kuwa nikimuaga maua. Hawaja kuja tena. Yani I will not dwell there. Who is not with me. I will be thinking of who is with me. That I will, I will seek to glorify he is with me. Nani yako pamoja na mimi? Ni mungu. Bas. Hawa jamaa wa kwetu. Atijui. You know. When Job was tempted. You know Job, temptation yake ili mpereka mbali sana. Hata akizaliwa. Alikumbuka akizaliwa. Anaanza kusema, wewe mama ulio niza. Uli niza kwa nini? Siunge li kataa kuniza. You know, instead of Job getting to where he got, because there is a place he got and said, hey, nimekuwa nikikusikia. Watu wakisema habari yako. Lakini sasa, nimekujua. And you know that is where God wants to take you. He wants to take you to a place where it will be personal. Nimesikia bishop wakisema. Lakini sasa, I have come to know you. I know you. Rest in who is there with you rather than regret who is not. One of the blessings of finding yourself in the wilderness is the recognition of who it is that is with you there. I told you to go to the first to the sermon we received in the morning. Because in the sermon, the preacher said, there is no temptation that comes to you, but that in every temptation, he makes a way of escape for you. All what you need is to look for the way of escape. Finding who is with you there. The Gospel of John 14, 16, and 18 says, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. That's what Jesus says. Let's all say together, Psalms 23, verse number 4. Let's say it together. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Let's do it one more time. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. It doesn't matter where I am, thy rod, thy staff. Isaiah 40 and verse number 10. Fear thou not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yes. I will help you. you. Yes, I will uphold thee with thy right hand of my righteousness. Listen to what Spurgeon wrote about that verse 
give it a commentary. He, comment, he gave a commentary. It's a long one. So, so listen. He says this. Let's hear the Lord Jesus speak to each one of us. I will help you. It is but a small thing for me, thy God, to help you. Consider what I have done already. What? Not help thee? Why? I brought thee with my, I bought thee with my blood. What? Not help thee? I have died for you. And if I have done this great thing, will I not do even the small one? Help you? It is not, it is not the least thing I will ever do for you. I have done more and I will do more. Before the word began, I chose you. I made the coven, a covenant for you. I laid aside my glory and became a man for you. I, I gave up my life for you. And if I did all this, I will surely help you now. In helping you, I am giving you what I have bought for you already. If thou hadst need a thousand times as much help, I would give it to you. Thou requires little compared with what I have already given to you. It's much for thee to need, but it is nothing for me to bestow. Help you? Fear not. If there were an ant at the door of thy granary asking for help, it would not ruin thee to give him a handful of thy wheat. And thou art nothing but a tiny insect at the door of my all oh, my sufficiency. I will help you. Did you get that? Did you get that? What Spurgeon was saying, if an ant, can ant come kuja kwa granary yako ya maindi? Can a gonga gonga can atakam sada? Think about it. Can a gonga sada? Granary yako majada maindi. Can a gonga gonga atakam sada? Ata uke kasaidia. Kweli utajua ume kasaidia. Kwa sababu katakura maindi ngapi? If you live your nerve, you say, Ma wewe, I, I will help you. At, will I help you? You are like that can't. You are just knocking there. And my granary has all this. Will I not help you? In other words, it's just what Jesus is saying. Oh ye of little faith. I, I like that. At help thee. Fear not. If thou are an at the door of thy granary asking for help, it would not ruin thee. Give it. And you are that. That's what God is saying. I have all this sufficiency. And even when... You come out of here. Ni kama mtu akienda kwa bahari ya Mombasa. Siniluambia siku moja nirienda. Ni kafikiria. Ukienda uchote uko. Hai. Uchote ndo thate. Zamaji. Arafu uzimame pale na ndo zako thate. Taidi ikija itarudi pale pale ilikuwa inakujaga na umechota that <laughs> that's what it means there is <laughs> where sangine hapa kuna kuaga moto wa kuotea mbali realize thirdly realize that there are some times of loneliness and trial that only you and the spirit can understand the verse that we read, and Jesus being full of the Holy Spirit, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil. 40 days tempted by the devil. And when the, those days were finishing, he did, he did nothing. And they were, when they were ended, he was hungry. We see only three temptations listed for our benefit. However, Jesus was tempted for 40 days. In the wilderness. Before we see these three temptations. Therefore God suddenly understood. That we did not need. To know all about. The other temptation. But we did need to know. About these three. There are some things. That must be born by one or other. Uh, no other person. But you only. And the spirit of God. For example, the loneliness of an employment is a loneliness that at times few can even share or understand. The thoughts, the feelings that comes upon it. We might not understand the way people have pushed you out because you don't have a job. Do you know it is like this? 
When you are hungry, when you are ume ja sana, upewe chakula, ukule. I, ukisha kula, mtu akuulize, watu wakiwa wananjaa wanafirigi na mna gani? You have no idea. Kwa sababu, ile tumbo, imejaa. Now that is how human beings will behave. May God help us. And help us to understand that God who we believe in wants us to know what I'm going through is only God who can understand. And therefore, each one of us here, whatever loneliness we are going through, there is one who understands that is God and that's you and the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Ocha ni wachi hapo. Si kuisha imeisha. Ni kuacha. Na ni maliza na kusema hivi. Katika haya mambo yote ni mesema. We tu ukuo metulia na unachikia. Hii situation ni kolonle. Jiulize muko na nani. Ukisha jua muko na nani. Wacha kulialia ni nani ya muko nayo. Oh, imaito. Oh, sijui nani. Sijui. <laughs> Tulienda mahali tukaubiriwe na mtu. Ikasemekana. Depending on who is closer to you, ukiwa na shida niye unaitaga. Lakini they discovered, hakuna mtu unaitaga baba yake. Sijui baba. Baba. What's the problem with babas? Maybe we need to work on that babas. Kwa sababu hata wewe baba unaita mama. But I learned that God, in my loneliness, when I get into that situation where I feel like I can see you, but I cannot feel you, in that situation of loneliness, and most of us will find ourselves there one time or another, let's ask ourselves in this, Niko Nanani. Siku uliza Ninani Siko Nai. Adini. Ni, ni, ni nani siko nae. Kwa sababu uta, utateta, uta, laumu serikali, utaraumu wazazi wako, utaraumu bishop, utaraumu pasta, ama utafanya kama yule mshirika aliniambia alihepa, akaambiwa arudi. Kwa sababu alikosana na dada mwingine huku wakitoka tu, sema kwa ni kanisa ni hitu. You know, the church has a blessing for you. You know, there are some people that will, leave, will miss their blessing just because somebody can yangad you on the door to there. Kwa sema kwa ni kanisa ni hii. Na utaenda ingine kanyangwa, kwa sababu kanyangwa inakuwaga mukifenyana. Lakini wakati wa corona sasa ni sawa, watu wanaenda na space. Kwa hivyo wakuna. Oh my goodness. Let's all stand. There is a, a song that I used to sing many years ago. And we can try it. My God knows the way through the wilderness. Whatever wilderness you find yourself. And all what you need to do is to follow. In one stanza I say, strength for today is mine always. And all I will need for tomorrow. My Lord knows the way through the wilderness. I know, uh, yeah, wa huibaji, mwafanya vizuri, muniokoe. My Lord knows the way Through the wilderness All I have to do is to follow My Lord knows the way strength for today.
is mine always. And all I have to need for tomorrow, maybe I do that for you. Ata mumeweke wa pale. Wewe uishi milele. Strength for today is mine. Know the way and all that I need for tomorrow, my Lord. feeling lonely. So I want to give you an opportunity. Maybe you have people around you, they are family members, maybe you are in this church, in a good cell, but there is that situation you have found yourself lately of feeling lonely. You feel they are there, but you feel lonely. If you are there, I want you to put up your hand. Up to the Lord. Tell God, I find myself, <laughs> it doesn't happen always, but I find myself sometimes feeling lonely. Thank you. The Lord bless you. Put it back. Strength for today. As you lift up your hands, we were just saying that. Those that are putting up their hands, just put your hand up. I want them to put this dancer there that says, strength for today is mine all the way. And then let's sing that together. Strength for today is mine all the way and all that I need for tomorrow. My Lord knows the way to the wilderness and what I have to do is to follow. Every hand lifted, Heavenly Father, I want to declare to them and make this de declaration that strength is theirs today, right here and right now. And that strength is going to help them for tomorrow. Because Father, Heavenly Father, the victory for today, they will stand on it for tomorrow. Because Lord God, you know the way through the wilderness. Help us to maneuver our way out. Dear Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, help us to know who is on our side and not lament on who is not because Lord it is your presence that makes all the difference I want to thank you and to give you praise for allowing us to hear this message for it is in Jesus name that we pray and believe in Jesus name Amen